All right, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Um, I have uh, I have a good guest on today, Tanner. We've been keeping in touch on mainly social media. I've actually never met him in person, but I've been seeing his stuff around for so long, and I finally decided to reach out to him just because I've been trying to get in a habit of interviewing people that are especially good at bringing common sense back to health and wellness in the social media world which is kind of like a like a fading trend you know everyone's like very going uh putting a lot of tension onto these catchy phrases and all these like secret diets just to try to stand out and all this may allow the influencer to stand out of course but at the expense of confusing the general public of what's actually important to master to optimize your health and kind of that's what i like about tanner's message is he always returns back to inevitably i mean i hate to say this phrase because it kind of like almost cheapens it but mastering the basics you know which is inevitably what you really have to do to to consistently like optimize your health so tanner i know you're it's already evening time there about 7 or 8 p.m in dubai he's meeting me all the way from across the world i'm in texas here so i appreciate you taking the time. I know you're busy taking the time to do this show. And I was just wondering, you can kind of start wherever you want to start. But I was just wondering what your take is on that. Like, first of all, like starting with how social media has evolved over the years, and if it's for the better or the worse for the general audience, which is generally looking for real answers of how to optimize their health and overcome various health challenges that are present today, especially in the in the Western world. Sure. Well, first off, Eugene, thanks for having me on your podcast. And my apologies again for being such a hard person to get in touch with and, you know, for us not being able to sit down and do this sooner. But I really appreciate your patience and persistence. Um, and I'll try to jump to your question uh, and answer that pretty directly. So I think social media um, can be one of the most powerful tools for helping and educating and spreading awareness. I also think social media can be one of the most powerful tools for spreading misinformation, lies, and, and, you know, convoluting things. So I think depending on the social media you consume and how also, you know, the person putting out the content, how, how they put their content out, if they use it intentionally or just for entertainment purposes, I think that's what really matters. And personally, I try to use social media very intentionally and it's, I'm always about, trying to deliver a message that adds value and, you know, just teaches people things and, and helps people. Like, you know, I'm not someone that's going to, you're not going to see me putting any content out there of me bragging about how good I look or, you know, how much weight I can lift or how, how good I am at working out. Cause like that adds zero value to anyone. Does that add zero value to my audience? So I think in general, I think social media it's a double-edged sword. Like I said, it can be very positive if, if you're, if you consume social media with intention, but that's the, you know, that, that, that goes to the person and the individual, you know, also, I, I think it can be um, extremely, I don't know, damaging or misleading if you let it, you know, if you, if you leave everything that you hear, cause you know, we live in a day and age where there's, it's information overload. There's too much information out there. And I think, a lot of people get paralysis by analysis, you know, and there's so many different people out there, you know, on social media, whether it's Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you know, and people do want to stand out and they do want to make themselves differentiate themselves by, you know, overanalyzing things or talking about fancy diets or, you know, new novel exercises and all that does, man, like people are, you know, they're missing they're missing the the forest for the trees or they're they're getting caught up on all the trivial you know details that are silly instead of just focusing on what really matters so I, I, you kind of hit the nail on the head and i wish i could say i i hate social media but i don't hate it i think it can be incredibly beneficial if you use it you know intentionally and you consume it intentionally well, what are what are some kind of uh, over the years, what are some kind of personal breakthroughs you've had? And did you also find I know like I got stuck in some loops of believing some things like on social media, especially sometimes they do come from credible sources, you know, like a person would have like a PhD or like an MD, for example. And you're like, well, you know, it, it kind of does make sense. Uh, although I've had results in the past doing very basic shit, maybe doing it this way might be a little bit easier or whatever. But then you find it's like, 
really maybe it makes like a small difference in the beginning, but in the grand scheme of things, it's like no difference whatsoever, but it's like far more elaborate and far more complicated to actually yeah. implement, Again, et cetera, et cetera. So. It, it, it goes out to, you know, all these people and I'm not knocking any scientists or PhDs or doctors or nutritionists or dietitians, you know, or trainers that have, you know, 10 different certifications. I'm not knocking them. You know, I think being educated is extremely important, but I think it comes to a point where your your audience and the, the people that you're trying to reach, they don't care about, you know, how educated you are. They only care about themselves and how you can help them. And I think when people overcomplicate, convolute, you know, and just put out stuff that makes people overthink, I think that's actually more harmful than helpful. And it just, it's not rocket science to me just to like bring it back down, speak in a tone or a language that actually will resonate with people and that, you know, everyday people can understand. So like I speak very simply, I'm always to the point and I speak it in layman's terms because that is what's actually going to resonate with people. So again, I, I think all that stuff that everyone's putting out or a lot of people are putting out, I think it's superfluous, not needed, overcomplicated. And I wish more people would just put out a message of, you know, holding yourself accountable, taking responsibility for your health, you know, and using common sense and intuition. You know, if more people took uh, an approach to their health with common sense and intuition, there'd be a lot less sick and unhealthy people in the world. Yeah, I don't know if you've, you've, it's not kind of a recent stat. I think it's from 2018, the study I'm quoting, but right now, like nine out of 10 Americans are metabolically unhealthy. Nine out of yeah, 10 American yeah. adults, like 90%. I think that's super crazy. I, dude, you know? that, that's super crazy. Like I, I've heard that. I've also heard over 50%. You know, I mean, again, I, I don't know the exact percentage, but like anytime I go back to America, I can immediately tell them in America because you're surrounded by overweight, unhealthy people, you know? And it's just like, it's, it's mind blowing, you know, that how people, how mindless they are you know, when it comes to their health and the food they put in their body and their activity level, did, you know, and like people, I, 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 you could give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, I, I would like that, but like people aren't stupid. People have enough common sense to know, you know, a good food from an unhealthy food. People have enough common sense to know they probably shouldn't be sitting on their ass on the couch all day. They probably should get up and do some kind of activity, you know? And so it really just, it saddens me that just so many people don't hold themselves accountable or don't care, you know, and, and they're totally okay. Just popping pills, you know, and not never taking responsibility, you know, you know, for their health. And like, that's something like, I try not to dive too deep into the weeds with any of my content because I don't think that helps people. You're, you know, mm -hmm. you'll have all these influencers or doctors. They're talking about like trivial fucking bullshit, you know, they're talking about, well, oh, are artificial sweeteners, actually harmful for you or are they not should you take powder protein is it really worse off than eating real whole food i'm just like this is all trivial why are you making content about this like people don't need to focus on you know artificial sweeteners people just need to hear that like you your health is your responsibility you know you need to get up and move your ass you need to lift some weights you need to eat healthy food that's what i feel like a message that more people need to hear but instead people are getting fed all of this, you know, information overload, trivial nonsense. And that's not helping people. That's just actually confusing people. Yeah. I, it's like, look, the average person, like I uh, mentioned, nine out of 10 people are metabolically unhealthy, at least in the States right now. It's like the average person is the average male, at least in the U S probably like 24, 25% body fat, 25% yeah. is obviously obese on like two or three different uh, medical drugs. And it's yeah. like, dude, they're running probably off of like five hours of sleep, maybe doing some shitty workout here and there, maybe. And that's kind of stretchy. Maybe. And it's like, dude, the, the message is like, oh, take out your artificial sweeteners. You know, I'm like, dude, you're a complete mess in your foundation and your kind of belief system that led you to yeah. so that foundation to begin with. And now you're worried about like making sure you get the right BCAs for in your, in your workout yeah, drink, you know, exactly. I'm like, dude, yeah. you don't even know the ABCs yet. Like first focus on the alphabet before you start putting together complicated sentences and poems because it is a mess and you're, and you're totally right. And I found going back to one of your statements here on a little bit of a note, I would have to disagree with you that people, um, 
know they're kind of sick. I think, unfortunately, today, and I'm referring to the States, I don't know how it is in Dubai, but unfortunately, today, like, I feel personally pathology has been normalized. It's normal to be overweight, normal dude, to be addicted yeah. to, and I say medical drugs. I don't even say medicine. They're drugs, dude. Stop beating around the bush. That's what they are. They're medicine. That's because America pushes pills, man, because America is re- ran on greed, you know, and like dude, pharmaceutical companies are probably some of the most powerful companies in America. And with all the lobbying and politics mm-hmm. and all that shit, you know, dude, anytime I go to America, I you immediately know there because you're surrounded by fat people. And the first thing you see on TV is some kind of fucking, you know, advertisement for the next latest, greatest pill mm-hmm. you know, that, that they're pushing on people. And so, dude, it's, it's, it's perpetuated in the media. People are inundated by, you know, popping pills and it being a normal thing. And it's like, you know, yeah, you need this. Are you overweight? Are you suffering from X, Y, Z symptoms? Take this pill. And it's I like, no. I don't no. even know if you, you've you heard of it. I got this from Sean Baker a little while back, but he mentioned that now they're creating a pill that's supposed to mimic exercise. So you don't have, you, you don't have to exercise. You take this pill and it'll create those biological reactions that supposedly exercise will create or mimic that. And I'm like, dude, when is the idiocy like going to stop? Like, it's so obvious to me that this is like scam bs that that literally if anything creates like for every one thing it might quote unquote suppress not even cure because medical drugs don't cure or prevent anything there are like five negative reactions then in a long enough time frame you have to take other medical drugs from that and each one of those are yeah. going to have a and at the end of the day, it's like even with something as common as high blood pressure, right? You have 800,000 Americans dying from heart attacks every single year, every single year. Can you imagine if like the military lost those kind of numbers and like military operations, what an outcry that would be? Yeah. And uh, even if you are given high blood pressure medication to, to suppress that high blood pressure, it's like, dude, the belief system that led to the development of that high blood pressure is also in a long enough time frame going to lead to the development of a myriad of other health issues. Yeah. And then like, what's your strategy just to be like, you're 50 years old, you look terrible, you feel terrible. Feel terrible. You're on like 15 different medical drugs. I don't even know how people remember to take all of these things. I don't I have trouble taking like a magnesium, uh, yeah. magnesium supplement <laughs> once a day consistently enough. But uh-huh. um, the, and this is most people, Eugene. And this, and this is why like, my message, I really don't deviate from my message that much. And it's all about personal responsibility, you know, and holding yourself accountable and using common sense, you know, and like most people, they'd rather just pop pills they don't need and just blame shift and and play the victim card, you know, because like so many people are just brainwashed and I, and, it's, and you're right. It's not everyone's fault, you know, but in my opinion, like, it's not because it's not for lack of knowledge. Like you can't use that now with the internet, you can literally learn anything you want anytime, you know? And yep. like, it's like, you don't need to be a smarter, intelligent person to know that eating low quality processed foods and being sedentary probably isn't the best thing to do for your long-term health. It's, it's like kind of common sense. And again, some people, you know, I think most people that they might just not care, you know, and it's, it's shame. I, I hate to see it that way. So that's why I put, I try to put out a message where it can be very uh, controversial or very, um, you know, it might rub people the wrong way, but cause I, I speak the brutal truth um, or I try to, and yeah, it's definitely going to offend some people, but you know, if you don't like the truth and you know, change your truth, you know, take control of your life, take control of your health and do something about it. Yeah, I mean, I watched a lot of your content. I wouldn't say any of it's like offensive. I mean, it's offensive if you've normalized pathology. <laughs> yeah, and of course. You know, if you've normalized pathology and you're here, your message of common sense, like, hey, use movement yeah. of medicine, go to sleep for, you know, eight hours a day or whatever, yeah. eat real like whole food. And sure, you can take supplements here and there, but don't just live off supplements and pills and stuff of that sort. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's that's common sense. And to go back to your point, I mean, I was raised uh, by my grandmother off grid and uh, she lived to be 87 without, she went to the, she went to the doctors like a single time to give birth to my mom and that's it. And she lived in full health uh, up until probably the last like five or six months of her life where it went kind of downhill pretty quick and then dying at 87. Uh, And then in the U S you have, you know, all these medical breakthroughs 
all of this literature, all of this and that and that. And, and dude, it's like the sickest country in the world. It's like nine out of 10 yeah. people are metabolically unhealthy right now. And it's like one it of the things. On now, other, man. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's a vicious cycle. And I covered this with Paul Check, and I would like your opinion on it too. But I think one of the problems is, unfortunately, a lot of our health leaders are extremely sick as well. So obviously, leadership sets the tone. And I don't know how you yeah, feel about you, that or your you, observation about that. Here's how I look at it, man. If you distill everything down, if you like simplify everything and just to look at, you can look at it objectively why things are the way they are in America. It's purely greed driven. Dude, the healthcare system and pharmaceutical companies want people fat and sick and unhealthy, you know, so they can make more money. Like, dude, if if the healthcare system started actually preaching the truth and telling people what they actually need to hear and getting healthy, there's not going to be nearly as many fat and sick people, you know, in hospitals. Hospitals aren't going to be making money. Healthcare workers aren't going to be making money. Doctors aren't going to make as much money, you know. And again, pharmaceutical companies they need doctors to prescribe their pills, you know. So it it if you just look at it and then like i said all these healthcare leaders that don't practice you know that they, they don't they don't practice what they preach they don't know shit about being a healthy life you know being healthy but yet they're in these positions of power mm-hmm. Dude, they're, they're, they're puppets man that's why i look at it they're all fucking puppets everyone's just trying to get a paycheck at the end of the day you know yeah or get and some kind of title at the expense of yeah, actual yeah, real information yeah so that's that's how i look at it again i'm not saying i'm right but i mean in my in my opinion, it's dude. It's all. It's just a, a vicious cycle that people need to be aware of what it is and try to get out of it. And know people need to think for themselves and stop being, you know, influenced and stop being sheep. And Tanner, I hear a lot of people with a similar message to yours always saying it's it's my opinion and I'm not necessarily right. Like first of all, you are right, and it's not yes. just your opinion. It's like fact and the law that human beings have evolved you know, been around for like 2 million plus years. There are 28 plus human species that have come and gone. And we're kind of the last one standing basically. And I mean, look, look at the past history outside of like the last, like even 10,000 years before cultivation of crops and domestication of animals started. How are people living, man? They're just like moving around all the time. They're eating real whole food, like wild, wild fish, drinking basically only water or maybe some teas, you know, out of leaves kind of come up with out in nature in the sunlight all day definitely not in front of a computer in front of co-workers they don't like maybe a boss they don't yeah. like uh whatever only a two, uh one week vacation or two week vacation in some countries where you get to yeah. go live like a human being for a second and then back to basically being like a minion of the matrix yes like locked up yeah. behind a computer etc cetera, etc cetera. and it's like dude they didn't have like a 401k plan they didn't have health insurance or a health guru or like Tony Robbins helping them optimize their whatever personalized self. And they're like all extremely healthy. If you take out child mortality, they all died at a pretty old age as well, you know, 50, 70, 70. And they're like super jacked. And you can see like a couple documentaries from uh, the Hansa tribe in Africa. I mean, dude, they're like, Oh, like mega, they can outperform me in like two seconds. I'm oh, not even... for sure. And, and these these people, yeah, they basically just they're they're living that hunter gatherer lifestyle still, you know, and that's why they're so healthy. It's like it comes down to like intuition, yeah. You know, it like that's what I'm saying, like common sense and intuition. You know, eat real whole nutrient dense foods, be on your feet, move your body. You know, like these Hans people, they're not lifting weights, but I guarantee, like. They're, they're out, you know, hunting, gathering, mm-hmm. doing all kinds of physical stuff, building and things like that. And that's why they're so healthy. You know, they're they're eating meat, drinking water, probably drinking some milk, you know, maybe eating some crops, you know, like, I don't know, you know, I don't really know enough about it, but like just living a very basic natural lifestyle, you know, whereas most people, man, they're lazy and lazy and just they're caught in the matrix, I think, and just you know, they they eat mindlessly and it's, it's, it's way easier to, you know, to fill up on low quality processed foods that, you know, throw off your body's natural satiety mechanisms and just force you to overeat. You know, it's, that's way easier and it's way cheaper. It's way more accessible, you know, whereas if people just ate real whole high quality food and just ate some steak and, you know, any kind of food that has high quality protein, that's going to make them feel full and they're not, they're not going to overeat, you know, and they'd be way healthier just doing that.
but it's just dude the world the world is is what it is man like technology is one of the greatest things that can also be one of the worst things I find with the cheaper with the cheaper comment at least in the US like a 2000 calorie even whole food factory farm diet costs about like seven, $7.70 a day and then a USDA organic a uh, whole food diet of equivalent type of foods for 2000 calories a day costs about like $12 and 50 cents a day. So it is like a $5 difference. But yeah. when you look at the fact that the average American, so it's like for an organic diet, basically for 2000 calories a day, you're looking at 5,000 a year, us dollars. So, some people say, Oh, that's too expensive, you know? And, but wait a minute, like the average American also spends eight to $16,000 a year on non-essential expenses. Like that, t- totally not even thinking twice about it, going out yeah. eat with their coworkers f- for lunch. All yeah. alcohol. Um, tr- Dude, oh, buy them, buy morning coffee. Buy yeah. Morning yeah. Coffee. I don't have money for a health coach that could help transform my life for the better, but I have $2,000 to go to Europe for a week and then return back to my misery right after that. Yeah. And people and just do this. ton of money on alcohol. Yeah. You know, and- low, you know low quality food. And if you take out the total cost of healthcare right now and divide it per individual in the U.S., the average American is spending about fourteen thousand dollars a year on medical expenses related to their poor lifestyle and nutritional choices. So not only are they funding their misery, obesity, and disease through that eight to sixteen thousand dollars, now to deal with the symptoms of those poor choices, they're paying another fourteen thousand dollars a year. So you're looking at easy twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year on just living a non-health conscious lifestyle. And if you tell these people like it's $5,000 for organic food, they'll instantly tell you it's too expensive, not even continue to, to listen to you any second. But wait a minute, I'm like, dude, you're coming up with twenty or $30,000 a year to remain looking unattractive, to remain feeling terrible all day. Yeah. And get this, Tanner, 68% of bankruptcies in the US are due to health issues. It's actually the number that. one leading reason for bankruptcy in the U.S. right now. Wow, I did not know that. That's a that's a kind of a fascinating statistic. And like Eugene, you're way more studied and well read than I am on this. But I, I I believe you. I believe you on that. Like I could see how you know healthcare is bankrupt. It's bankrupting people just because. Again, man, I, I try to distill everything down to its simplest form. People just do not want to hold themselves accountable for their actions. You know, they, they, they will always want to take a shortcut. And like, that's why I've made some content recently because it's true. Even when I walk around out, out in public places, like I look around and I'm not trying to judge people, but you can just look man. like people are inherently lazy pieces of shit in so many ways, you know, and I hate saying that, but it's absolutely true. You know, like people are always going to take the shortcuts. And I know it's human nature to always do what's easy. But dude, if you do what's easy today, your life's going to be hard tomorrow. Like it's it's pretty much it's pretty much that simple. So you're way better off delaying gratification, doing the hard thing today, and your life's going to be easy tomorrow. Yeah. Well, what do you what do you think about like um, I had this one observation. I'm just curious your opinion on it. Like a lot of healthcare practices these days are all in the mindset of like. uh, I mean, in short, I'm going to explain it in two different ways. But like, if you have a rock stuck inside your shoe, you know, don't take the rock out and walk pain free, but take pain medication instead. But another way, another way of putting it is a lot of um, healthcare practices these days are more over like, let's continue to live in a cesspool, you know, in a swamp that's causing a lot of disease, but Let's kind of tinker around, and you have a lot of healthcare professionals doing this, also a lot of big name social media health health people as well. And they're like, instead of like stepping out of the swamp and then you'll just naturally heal, they're like, well, let's continue to stay in the swamp, but let's use our intellect to tinker here, tinker there, and try to change this little thing, this little thing, and you know, damage control, damage control. And these people might actually be super smart. But I think their biggest flaw is, I'm like, dude, why don't you just fucking step out of the swamp? And then yeah, take, sudden, take the rock out of your shoe. dude, they, you they, they'd rather, yeah, they'd rather, they'd rather get lost in the weeds, man. They'd rather dive down these stupid fucking rabbit holes that really doesn't help that many people. And just honestly, it just confuses people. 
again, I mean, I'm a very black and white kind of person. There's no gray area in my life. You either do something, or you don't, you want something or you don't, you know, it's, it's so simple, but people are just paralyzed by having too many options or too many choices, you know, like it's, it, it just kind of is what it is, man. I don't really know how to explain it, but that's why I put out the message I do, you know, and I just try to simplify everything down to its root. And I try to like get people to start thinking for themselves and using common sense, you know, all these fucking doctors and PhDs and scientists, you know, let them stand out, let them do what they want to do. But like, if you really want to help yourself, man, it's just about doing the most basic, simple shit and, you know, delaying gratification. Well, I would agree, dude. It's gratifying to look good 24-7. I don't even know how that's delaying gratification. Yeah, that, like, that's, people that's think, absolutely true. It, yeah, people it, think like yeah. what you say, it's like tough. I'm like, dude, it's way freaking harder to yeah, look at yourself in the so, mirror, yeah, not like what you see, yeah. and then continue to do the activities and behaviors that are leading you to not like what you see <laughs> reflecting back at you in the mirror. I think that takes heart. I think what you and I do doesn't take heart because because it's more pleasurable and enjoyable. It's the easier route, in my opinion, yeah. versus versus that other route of being, first of all, uh, the number two reason for divorce, too, is, is lack of attraction to your partner. Number one reason is finances. So first yeah. of all, almost 70 percent of bankruptcies are due to health issues. Then you exponentially more likely to get divorced because your partner doesn't find you attractive yeah. anymore. Yeah, then, dude, you don't you, you let yourself go. Agree. Yeah. yeah, and then your day to day existence, it's like it sucks, dude. Like I really don't know how how people do it, which is goes back to I just really believe pathology has been normalized. And I actually think, really like that. That's like, but dude, it's like being unhealthy is normal now. Pathology is normalized, and. That's a great thing. And like that actually might inspire some content for me. So you're right. You're absolutely right on that. And I think, and I don't know if you've had this observation, but I think um, I've had this happen a lot, especially in the States when I used to give grocery store tours and teach people about all the food labels and what whole food is versus processed food, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes you do walk up to people and they're like, well, you know, I've been eating this junk my whole life and I feel fine. Meanwhile, they're like 35 pounds overweight. They got, they're only, they're only like 30, 35 pounds over. Yeah. They have all these orthopedic issues. They're on two medical drugs already. And yeah. they're like, oh, dude, I'm completely fine. And in their mind, it might actually be true because probably the person next to them in the office is exponentially worse. So as a comparison, sure, you're doing well. Yeah. But then when you I compare, can't. you know, them to us or us to even like tribesmen, like the Hanza or the hunter gatherers, which would basically smoke pretty much all professional athletes these days like 24 7 it's like dude you see how far the pathology has evolved you know yeah and it's like you don't even I, I don't even think researchers can study human beings anymore because you've taken them so far away from their natural evolution you can't even get an accurate representation of their mental and physical health so any studies that come out are instantly question the validity of that in terms of how it actually really genuinely applies to human health man I cannot agree with you more. And this is why I get so annoyed with people and all these different people on social media pointing to X, Y, Z studies. Like, dude, you don't need fucking studies to know that, you know, eating real whole food is going to be better than eating processed low quality foods. You don't need studies to tell you to fucking get up and move your ass and exercise and lift weights. You know, it's like, again, man, people, they just, they miss the forest for the trees and they, they just don't get it and like i agree dude all these studies like pe people are so far gone from what a natural human lifestyle should be that dude like the people that we're making these studies on like is it does it really even matter you know is it really that accurate how do we actually know it's like stop focusing on studies and just like use common sense like that's just my opinion again man you know way more about the, all that stuff than i do i can already tell you that i just don't see how all that all the science all all those stupid details that doesn't really help people man they, they, they just people need to hear the truth you know and use common sense again like i, I can't really say it any differently or you know say anything different because that's what it comes down to
Yeah, it's like, dude, okay, like if you've optimized everything, maybe tinkering on those studies here and there is great, great idea to really go that extra 1% or 2% or whatever. But yeah, first, but step, first, first steps first, man, like freaking A, quit the job you fucking hate. That alone yeah. would dramatically improve the quality of your life a tremendous amount and allow you to clearly think about what you actually need in your life. Because if you're sure. working... um you know, the human central nervous system hasn't quite evolved to deal well with micro stresses. And if you're, you know, stuck in traffic for an hour to work, then you're at work and you and you don't like the work. There's a story gap there. You don't like one of your coworkers, which is typical. You know, you have a lot of social politics in any circle of people. Yeah. It's not like there's anything wrong with your company in particular. You know, you might not like your micromanagement style of your boss, et cetera, et cetera. That causes a tremendous amount of micro stresses in your day. Then you go out with your friends, you eat some inflammatory food with a lot of seed oils and maybe some yeah, off for lunch. Bad for your body. That throws off your brain chemistry too. You know, it's yeah. It's a... And then and then you sit in front of a computer for four more hours, then you get stuck in traffic going home, then you get home yeah. probably not even liking your relationship at home anymore. It's like, dude, fix all that first before you start wor worrying about artificial fucking sweeten <laughs> sweeteners and how to optimize your BCAA intake or whatever other goofy biohack sure. is out there on the market these days. No, that's and that's another thing that I tell a lot of people again, and I'm I'm always trying to go back to the root cause, but I'm a firm believer that everything in your life is a choice and everyone they can and must take a hundred percent responsibility for their life. And most people don't do that, man. Most people, they let life happen to them instead of making life happen for them. Do you, do, do you get what I'm yes. saying? Yes. I you totally know? agree. And like, if what you just said is all true, so many people are stuck in that lifestyle where they hate their life at home. They eat low quality processed food. They hate getting to work. They hate their coworkers. They hate their job. They're just miserable in all other senses. It does not have to be that way. You literally just need to look at yourself and like say, all right, how did I get to this point? You got to that point because you 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 made all these wrong choices. And not making a choice is a choice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So every person is where they are because of every single choice they've made in their life up to that point. And so that's why, again, another message of mine is taking a hundred percent responsibility for your life, you know, and deciding what you want. If more people just did that, people would be so much happier and healthier. Yeah, one one uh, good line I got from one of my mentors, Brian Carroll, which kind of set the world record for a 1,300-pound squat. Um, he mentioned, uh, I remember I kind of tweaked my back and I hired him, and he's one of Stuart McGill's main uh, main disciples or whatever you want to call yeah. him. And um, I remember I didn't want to let the belief system go that led to that injury, so I kept you know, doing micro injuries along the way. And I would come to him, you know, two months later, it's like, oh, I tweaked it again. And uh, he said something super powerful that kind of woke me up. And it was kind of one of these light bulb moments. And he mentioned, well, you know, Eugene, that's okay that you keep injuring your lower back because at this point, you know, you're doing it to yourself. And that's super powerful because if you're doing it to yourself, you can stop anytime, you know? And that kind of woke me up. He's like, oh shit, you know, he's totally right. And if I'm doing it to myself, I have all the power. I could stop anytime. And yeah. I feel pretty much any health issue applies to that. You know, of course, there are no absolutes and you have some, uh, even sometimes I feel too, like, you know, sometimes maybe let's say you got in a car accident and it wasn't your fault and you injured your back. A lot of yeah. times I do feel people stay in a lot of pain in that portion. It is their fault, you know, because there is a lot of help out there. Polichek has a lot of great content on spine pathologies and recovery, Stuart McGill, Brian Carroll, uh, yeah. and many others that kind of forget them off the top of my head. I mean, there's, there's a laundry list of very credible people. And by not taking action, continue to take those pain medications and say, this is going to be me for the rest of my life. Maybe the car accident wasn't your fault for sure, but you staying in pain is most likely probably your fault. Yeah. Once again, no absolute, but generally no, so like, that is true. If, if, if you go to this thing, there's this Maybe you've heard it, but everything that happens in your life, there's there's an event, then there's the response, and then the response determines the outcome. 
So the event, the car accident, your response, how you respond to do it. All right. Are you just going to like accept your fate and pop pills and not do anything to help yourself? That's your response. Then the outcome is going to be shit. But if you have the event, the car accident, and then you respond like, all right, fuck, I got to figure out how to get my back better. And I got to find, you know, do whatever it takes to get better. And the outcome is going to be radically different, you know, than the other outcome, depending on the response. So like your response and how you respond to things is everything. Like I can say that with hundred percent certainty because I've had 16 orthopedic surgeries, both my ankles. I've had nine knee surgeries, four shoulder surgeries, and I've recovered from, from them all. Like my knees are fucked, but they're actually not because I've done what it takes to get better at them, you know, to get them better. So it's like, it's dude, it's again, man, everything, everything comes down to everything in your life's a choice. Mm-hmm. Like again, I, it's, you know, it all stems back to that, man. And that's why I'm a big firm believer in that, you know? And like when you, when you blame shift or you say, oh, you're powerless, you know, or just you have that victim mindset and mentality, then you are literally saying you're powerless and no one is powerless. No one's powerless. Everyone has the ability to take control over their life at any point. So I just wish more people realize that. And unfortunately, some people, they go through their entire life and they never, they never even have that, you know, thought, you know, occur in their, in their brain, in their, in their mind, like, dude, anyone can help themselves at any time. You have to choose to do it though. Yeah. And there's a great book, I think from an 18th century author called Gustavo Le Bon called the crowd. He was a very popular, uh, well, I don't know if he was popular back then, but he's definitely a popular book now uh, about crowd psychology. And in one of the chapters, he mentioned something that's very interesting and intriguing in the sense that he's like, well, you know, people are, uh, they like to, not create their own values, but just mirror society's values because it's just easier. You know what I mean? Yeah, then sure. through the hardship of, um, you know, doing what you don't want to do, learning from it, and then letting that be a lesson of getting you closer to what you actually do want to be doing, et cetera, et cetera. And you mentioned a funny thing you can actually try on most people is uh, you could ask them like, oh, if they have a belief, like say they have a belief, you're like, you just ask them like, oh, why do you have that belief? And they'll say something for sure on the first level. They'll give you an answer right away. But then ask them again, why is that? And they'll go blank. 95% of people plus will just go blank right away. And they'll say, that's just the way it is. And I've just been doing it, which immediately indicates they've gone off of social programming their whole entire life and based their whole entire personality and existence off that blanket statement, social programming, which has probably most likely zero reflection of who they are as an individual and obviously the wider the story gap you know the wider the disconnect between your core values and then how that's reflected in your life of course the more maladaptive behavior has to form to deal with that disconnect because you know you're being fake to yourself at the end of the day and then of course you gotta that leads to poor lifestyle and nutritional choices which leads to Almost every freaking damn health issue imaginable and that you see these days uh, anywhere, you know? And so what is taking artificial artificial sweeteners out of your freaking drink or optimizing your BCAs or whatever other biohack bullshit? How's that going to solve that problem, which inevitably is the etiology of your health challenge, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I agree, man. Uh, well, um, you and I could go back and forth on that, but we were of, of the same mind you know, of the same mind. Sure. Well, Tanner, I'm pretty sure at one point in your life, um, you probably wanted to go the mainstream route, you know, get a corporate job, go to college, you know, I certainly felt that pressure, uh, especially when I was finishing up college, you know, like a lot of my, I played college football and a lot of my, my teammates, you know, that didn't go to the NFL, you know, just weren't fortunate enough to go to the NFL and play at the next level. Like we all had to, you know, the, the real world hit us. We all had to get jobs. And I'm just really thankful that I knew myself well enough to know that I, I couldn't, I couldn't have taken that route personally. I'm not, that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying like a lot of my friends, you know, they ended up going into the oil and gas industry because they know they can make money. But my other friends, they went into insurance, you know, and other, other, other of my friends, they're lawyers. And again, that's nothing wrong with that. 
But I don't think any kid grew up, you know, dreaming to be an insurance broker or to go work, you know, at a natural and oil and gas firm or, you know, or wanted to be, a, you know, a lawyer. Like no kid grew up doing that. Um, that's just what happens when you give in to all those pressures and you kind of, you're conditioned by society. Like, all right, you need to have this kind of job because you're going to make money and if you're making money, you're going to be successful. You know, so that's what you need to do. And again, I think there's pressure from society, there's pressure from family, from friends and all that. And I'm just really thankful that I didn't, I had enough, I guess, foresight to know like, all right, you know what, man, I'd rather fucking make a thousand dollars a month and do something I enjoy than make $10,000 a month and do something I hate. And I'm, I'm super lucky I had that. And a lot of that, the big reason for that is because I read this book that you know really helps me realize it because the most successful guy, one of the guys I looked up to the most on my football team, he went and played in the NFL and was just the hardest working, most disciplined person I ever met. And he was just amazing. And I, I have the utmost respect for him. I still do. And I still look up to him. He told me to read this one book and he's like, bro, this book changed my life. I'm like, you should read it. And I've, I did, I was like, fuck, dude, one of these self-help books, like this is going to be some, you know, bullshit, but you know what? This guy told me to read it. I'm going to fucking read it. And I read it. And honestly, I, I, I believed in it and I adopted it. And it changed my life forever. It changed, it changed the trajectory of my life. So, you know, it's it's crazy. But it's, it basically what it come down to is, came down to is like taking 100% responsibility for your life and deciding what you want. You know, and most people never do that. And that's why they get stuck in the rat race or they become sheep. They just never sit down to, to, to to think about what do they actually want out of their life and they don't take a hundred percent responsibility for their life. So. Yeah. One thing, one thing about the general underlining theme of like, especially in America, I feel it's kind of like you're indirectly bombarded with the message of be like everyone else, but better, you know, yeah. and if you go down that route, trust me, you're going to be, you're going to be in a life of misery, obesity, and disease 100%. Yeah. And results speak for themselves. Don't even take my freaking word for it. Don't even read any studies. Just go do an observational study yourself. Go outside literally anywhere in America. And nine out of 10 people you run into are full of obesity, misery, and disease. You can totally see the pain in their face. Yeah. The, the saddest part is, Tanner, I hate beating this to death here, but it's like, I hate, uh, it's the saddest part is it's, it's totally been normalized. If you talk yeah, to dude. an average person, you're like, don't you see that there's a lot of pathology you're living? They're like, no. Dude, it's <laughs> like, crazy. Dude, I know, like, I, what? It's, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, people are, dude, it's pathology has been normalized. That's such a powerful statement, Eugene. And like, dude, I was just, every time I go out to eat at restaurants, I look around at all the people around me and tables and people are fucking drinking coke soda and they're eating low quality foods instead of eating high quality foods and they're filling up on that i'm just like dude or people are just fucking blind or just ignorant or just have no idea you know and it's it's man it's so sad and yeah it's like dude it's normal to be 35 pounds overweight you know and to, to feel like shit you know like i guarantee ten thousand years ago there was a lot more people that look like me. And I say this with humility, but I'm lean and muscular, you know, all the time. There was way more people that look like me. And like, it was normal to be lean and muscular. It wasn't normal to be, you know, fat and unhealthy. So it's just like, dude, things have changed, man. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. I'm curious, have you ever been confused by the labels in the grocery store? In Yevgeny's book, he demystifies the difference between caged, cage-free, free-range, and pasture-raised meats. He also covers how to avoid GMOs, source high-quality water, fish, supplements, and other related topics. It's a beautifully illustrated, non-technical read that comes with a comprehensive video series and other extended learning materials. Jump on Amazon and check out the book titled Anti-Factory Farm Shopping Guide by Evgeny Trefkin. Now let's dive back into the podcast. Yeah, I would even I would even argue like like going back to the previous statement of uh, I mean, at least for me, I can't kind of speak for you, probably far more athletic than me, actually, is dude, hunter gatherers like legit hunter gatherers would run circles around me personally. Oh, and yeah, I'm like no, literally probably the most 
fit person most of the time in any general crowd, you know, no, yeah. absolutely. there are people that for sure would run circles around me. I'm not trying to, yeah. that, but I'm just trying to give a reference point of how far. You're, you're, you're probably in like the top 1% for sure of, of health and all people for sure. Like I would say that at least probably in America. Yeah. But I was saying like one interview on the Joe Rogan show, the guy lived with the Hansa tribe for X amount of months. And he was describing like, dude, they would get up and, and go basically run for like five hours to catch an animal and be totally fine and not even sweating or painting, panting. Then they would drink some mud water out of the ground. That's like mud and fill the back, like a little, yeah. and then go for another five hours. And they're like all ripped. Their back muscles were like crazy. Yeah. Their kids were like ripped. And I'm like, dude, they don't, they don't, they don't, I don't even know if they have like a education system, not putting them down, but just showing no, you and my don't. grandmother yeah. was the same way. She, she she was basically uh she never plugged into society so so she was almost yeah. illiterate and she was still healthier than a lot of our health professionals here that have phds mds whatever other bullshit there is on the market you know and she's still yeah. like because what she did was genuinely master she wasn't lifting weights like us, us obviously but just genuinely master uh the basic stuff we're talking about which goes back to if you genuinely honestly do that dude you'll be healthy for sure you don't need any of this other bullshit and for sure if you maxed out that and you want to go that extra one or two percent then maybe that stuff can help here and there you know but if you're already in the in a huge deficit which most people are it's like dude even if it does help you a little bit you went from negative 30 to negative 28 you're still in a huge deficit you're still you're still fucked up and Gosh. don't even take tanner and i's word just freaking go look in the mirror i mean if you have huge lower chest fat, midsection fat, you know, if you're on medical drugs, if you feel like shit, if you need like a bottle of Xanax and two coffees just to get up and go to work one more day, that shit is not normal. Like it's not normal. That is what mental and physical pathology 101 looks like. And Tanner, can you touch? And I know, honestly, like, um, I forgot, but I read one study a long time ago and it showed in I when I was trying to get into IO psychology initially, and it showed that if 85% of people have their basic needs met, they would quit their work, their current line of work. So a lot of times finances, they may be consciously aware that they don't want to be in that path in life, but then they're like, well, I got, you know, I live in a monetary society and I got to pay for this and that, et cetera. Yeah. Can you also, because I know that probably ran through your head at one point when you're like, dude, I can't go this mainstream route which ran through my head too at the end of college it was at the tail end of that huge mortgage collapse in the u.s so no yeah. one was freaking getting jobs and i was telling my friends because i was already coaching very part-time five hours ten hours a week because i was mainly focused on my studies at university of california irvine and i saw i had directors come in etc and i already saw what 20 30 years of the corporate route will do to you if you're not careful and i'm like dude i can't have yeah. this and I was telling my friends, like, I'm just going to do my own thing and going to keep coaching and not not get a job. And uh, all of them were like, well, that's crazy, man. No one's getting work. And uh, that's crazy to even do some kind of luxury service like coaching and, and expect to do that, et cetera, et cetera. But just like you, in my, in my instinct, I knew that that route wasn't right for me. And I'm just going to go the extra mile and say that route isn't right for most people. I mean, like 98% of people, it is the wrong route to go to. But one of the concerns was like, well, well, shit, my friends are smart and they're going the opposite route. Maybe maybe they know something I don't know. Or how am I going to make my living? Can you kind of describe how you overcame those mental challenges in yourself? Yeah, I can. Um, and again, I wasn't perfect. I actually, when I finished up school, all I wanted to do was work out. That's all I really wanted to do. And I knew, I just knew in my heart of hearts that I couldn't live in a suit and tie. You know, I just didn't, I, I didn't care how much money I, I could potentially make or anything like that. I just knew that just not something I could do. I'm lucky I knew that. I'm lucky I knew myself that well at that young of an age. But I did get a job working as an oil roughneck, um, you know, like fucking hard ass manual labor. And I was making pretty good money. And I, I did that because I felt that pressure. Like, dude, we live in a like a, a monetary society. It's like I did feel the pressure to go out and make money and support myself. 
but at least I was like, all right, I'll be a roughneck. At least I'll be doing hard ass manual labor and I'll be on my feet. You know, I'd probably much rather do that than be stuck in front of a computer, you know? So I did do that, but then I quickly realized, all right, this lifestyle is not going to be conducive for me or my goals either, because that was a really hard life. That was a really good learning experience. And I learned exactly what I didn't want to do. And I also learned, you know, how much a dollar is worth, you know, like I was making really good money straight out of college, but I fucking hated my life and my health was declining at a rapid rate. So I quit. I just fucking quit. And then I just like went all in on fitness and it was definitely a leap of faith, but hindsight is the best thing I ever did. Like the only reason I've made it, you know, in fitness in this industry is because I've never had a plan B, you know, I never thought, all right, if this doesn't work out, I'll go do something else. No, like, dude, there is no, uh, there's nothing else. There is nothing else. Like I just made it work, you know? And so I definitely felt those pressures, but I also think I was lucky because I, I left America. And when I left America, I started feeling those pressures less, you know, and, and you're just, you're not around your friends or your successful mm-hmm. friends, a lot of you making money. Like dude, my first real job was coaching CrossFit and I was making $1,500 a month. You know, I was, I was making peanuts, but fuck it. I was happy, man. Like I was good. I was coaching people. I was helping people. I was getting healthier you know, and then, you know, just one thing led to another and I just stayed with my passion and I've ended up, you know, making it. And I'm, I'm very thankful for that, but my story may not be like everyone else's, but I think, like you said, like 98% of people would be way better off doing something they enjoy and love and not giving into those pressures and actually listening to God and intuition. But that's really hard to do, man. When you're like in that world and you're surrounded by yeah. everyone else, getting really high quality, good jobs, good jobs, you know, jobs they probably hate, but they're compensated well for, you know, it's, dude, it's hard, man. It's really hard. Again, I'm, I'm, I think someone like yourself is very lucky. You had enough well with your gut instinct and I'm very lucky myself because I also went with that gut instinct. Like a lot of people, they'll go work those corporate jobs for, you know, 10, 15 years. And then they finally figure it out. All right. You know what? This is not a good path. I've Mm -hmm. done it, you know, and they, they get out of it. And then they start doing something they genuinely love and are passionate about. And, you know, they, they kind of, you know, get on the right path. They, you know, self-correct. But um, like I said, man, again, every, I think everyone's different. It's hard to make broad sweeping generalizations. I'm just lucky, fortunate. That's really what I kind of, you know, it all comes down to in my opinion. Yeah. And I find like one thing, uh, I don't know if you've heard this before, but like maybe sometimes you might tell one of your clients like, hey, you know, you can see your jobs like wearing you down and stuff like this. You should probably think about getting another job. And uh, they're, they're... Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's I told sorry to interrupt, but no, I no, really told two of my clients, like, you need to quit your fucking job. Like your boss, your co-workers, they don't give a shit about you. Yeah. You know, exactly. Because they don't. No one no, they everyone, don't. Everyone, everyone only cares about themselves. That's like that's just the fact of life. And I'm really proud. Of, you know, one of my clients, she did quit her job. She already found a new job and she she she's a lot happier. But yeah, dude, I, I've, I've, I would straight up tell people like, quit your fucking job. Like, you don't know your job anything. Always take care of yourself first, because no one cares about you. You know that's why you should always, you know, prioritize number one. Yeah, exa- exactly. But w- one thing, like maybe you've heard this reply. You have to have heard this b- reply. Coaching people long enough, it's like, well, how am I going to give up if I quit my job? How am I going to give up my good lifestyle? And I find this ironic when most people say this. Because they're very sick, very tired, very overweight, and a whole bunch of drugs. And I'm like, what kind of good lifestyle are you talking about, man? <laughs> like, yeah. This no, is how delusional like, some people some people become, you know, yeah. when technology is normalized. And I'm like, dude, what no. are you talking about? Sure. <laughs> some of my some of my best friends, and I don't feel bad for saying this on a podcast, and I love these guys, but like they care more about the car they drive and the watch on their wrist than, than they do their health, you know? And it's like that in my opinion, their priorities are backwards and they, they know how I feel. Um, but yeah, dude, that's just a lot of people, man. It's like, it all comes down to at the end of the day, like what's important to you. And then it comes down to how you were raised, how you view the world, how you're conditioned. But yeah, you're right, man. Like I, 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 uh, I drive a really shitty car personally, but I, I eat the best food mm-hmm. every single day. I, I spend a shitload of money on food and, you know, I pinch pennies, pretty much anywhere else besides my health. I spend 
as much money as I need to on my health. But yeah, you know, that, that's you know, it, it all comes down to priorities, man. Like what's important to you. So it's rough, man. I try to make pe- I try to make more people prioritize their health and see like you know health is actual wealth. You know, not not what car you drive, not what watch you have on your wrist, and not the kind of clothes you wear. Like that's all superficial. Yeah, which kind of goes back to the to the point. I'm kind of making a joke out of this, but when they say like, "Oh, you know, um, they're mentally weak," I'm ironically think like, I never had any serious health issues. You know, I had a um, a disc injury in my lower back for sure, but it wasn't like so severe. I didn't even have sciatic symptoms. It's just very localized in my back, and I got sick one time for like six months in in college. But that's really about it for the most part. But even those kind of lessons have taught me that, dude, when you're li- when you lose your health, even to a degree, even if you're thriving in all other aspects of your life, all of a sudden your life it starts to suck. Doesn't matter. It doesn't sucks. matter, man. It doesn't yeah. matter. It yeah, just I've sucks. Content and, about this, man. Like if you don't have your health, you don't have shit. It doesn't it doesn't matter how much money you make. Your career doesn't matter. Your family doesn't matter. Like if you don't have your health, you literally have nothing. Like yeah, I that's it's it's true. I look at it like that. Like dude, your health is of the most importance, man. Because dude, if you're not, it doesn't matter how much money you make. If you're not healthy enough to enjoy it, who fucking cares? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, man, it just goes back to. I don't know. It's tough to tell whether it's getting better or worse, but the pathology being normal. What's your perspective? Do you feel it's kind of like, it's kind of tough to tell. I kind of almost feel it's getting worse. It's, I think it's going to, I think it's just getting worse. I don't know where, where I, you're I, getting on it. I, it's dude. I think it all comes down to what you consume on social media and the people you surround yourself with. If, if you think it's getting worse or not, you know, and it's like, what it's, it's really all it comes down to what, it, what, what you pay attention to. Like, so like, I'm quite selective on what I watch and consume. And I also spend a lot of time in the gym. So I'm spending, I spend a lot of time around a lot of healthy fit people, you know? So like, I don't know if it's getting really worse or not, but like when I go out to other public places, I'm just like, man, I am, I'm surrounded by unhealthy people, you know? And like, I want to say it's not getting worse. I want to say that just cause I'm an optimist, but it, it probably, it probably is getting worse, you know? Cause as I said, people are lazy people are inherently lazy they'd rather pop pills you know than actually take care of themselves so it probably is getting worse um again i i'm trying to like build you know grow a following and spread up what i consider to be a positive message so i, I want to say i'm trying to make it better but you know the world's such a big place man it's it's really hard and yeah all you know you can look at it statistically for sure like the general health of the populations has declined at a rapid rate since basically I think what the mid seventies or whenever, like, you know, processed foods, you know, really came, you know, in really became part of, I guess, people's diets. Like do people have just gotten slowly and steadily more unhealthy. So it's, yeah, it's, it's probably worse or as bad as it's ever been, but I'm trying to do something about it. Yeah. And one important thing, I'm kind of rewinding back a little bit. You said you were able to gain clarity once you actually moved out of the U.S. And yeah. when it goes back to that stepping outside of the cesspool instead of learning how to tinker and fix things while living in it. Like looking yeah. back at it now, can you imagine you ever changing if you stayed in the oil field that route? Oh, God, dude, I would be a piece of shit if I did like even working that job for a month, like I could just saw my health drastically decline because I wasn't able to train. I was eating such bad food because that's all I had access to. So I was working like out, like in the middle of nowhere and you just had what you had and you had to make do with it. Man, I don't even want to think about how my life would have ended up personally. It would, it would be, it would be a disaster. I probably have, I don't know. I may, I might have more money per se, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but I guarantee my health and my happiness would be shit. Yeah. Which goes back to the point. I just think from my observation is, um, if people embark on a health journey and continue to stay in the environment that also contributed to those health problems, I think that just the chances of relapse are pretty much almost a hundred percent. It's kind of like a person finishing a drug rehab center and then 
going back to the neighborhood where all the drugs are, yeah. where the druggy friends are, the dealer. Sure. Like, you don't yeah. have to be a master psychologist to know that the chances yeah. of relapsing going back to drugs is almost going to be a hundred percent at that point. Yeah. No, man. That's why you sh- I, I tell people this too, like ditch your fucking loser friends, you know, surround people, surround yourself with the right people. You know, like I don't have many friends and I'm, I don't care. Like all my best friends, they're all in, they were my college friends and they're all in the States. Like I live in Dubai now and like I have my girlfriend and luckily she's a really, really positive influence on me. Like we're a positive influence on each other. But I feel like I feel strongly about that saying like you probably are the average of the five people you surround yourself with the most. So definitely and you can control your environment. You know, there's no one says you can you can move to a better place. You don't have to surround yourself with loser friends. You know, that's why again it all comes down to choice. You know, like do you stay in that shitty environment and let yourself sink down to your friend's level or do you get yourself out of that and 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 get yourself to where you want to be yeah and yeah i would highly rec i i would highly recommend doing that as well and then also for for some cases it's kind of like the saying goes wherever you go there you are so sometimes you do have to change the person that led you to find it acceptable to be in that environment to begin with and it happens naturally in some cases but for some people that need an external source to help them. I mean, some books I found extremely helpful to kind of disconnect from a lot of my false self persona, which I thought was me, was just a lot of Stefan Walensky's work in quantum psychology. I found extremely helpful personally. Okay. It's probably not going to work for everyone, but it is a great resource, yeah. especially for people that have gone the psychology route. And, you know, after 10, 15, 20 years, they're still kind of working on their stuff but some somehow not getting better, it might be a good resource for you to check out. Uh, yeah. Check well, out. What's the, uh, what's, what's the author? Stefan Walensky? Stefan Walensky. Yeah. So okay. um, gr- great author. Uh, he was a psychologist for a long time, but then also invented the field of like quantum psychology. I mean, in short, it's pretty interesting stuff. In short, I'll just summarize it really quick. It's kind of like um, basically your central nervous system creates your personality, which is the case. I mean, it is true. And everyone has like a distinct personality trait that's mainly motivated by a certain fear. So for example, like sometimes you get spaciousness with no definition, and then you would label that spaciousness then as let's say emptiness. And then you would build inferences of, I feel empty because I am, and every personality is different of how this answer would occur because I am unworthy. So you spend your whole entire life proving that you are worthy, uh, getting degrees, whatever, making more money, whatever. And uh, the problem with that model is you had a false conclusion. First of all, it's spaciousness, and you labeled that as emptiness, and then you built inferences off presuming that you feel empty because you are worthless. And then, of course, you'll never come up with the right answer from a false conclusion. So you spend your whole entire life, base your whole entire personality off a flimsy false conclusion. And the further you go into that personality, the more you, in in terms of this case, probably the type three from the Enneagram, the more you go into proving you are worthy, the more you prove to yourself that you are not worthy because you have to keep that unworthy mirror alive to keep striving as a reference point for more worthiness. And you run into, not you particular, but a lot of people would run into this problem of like, you accomplish something, it provides a sugar high at best, but then you go back to feeling empty almost right away. And then you go to the next thing. And the bigger your accomplishments are, the more empty you feel. And you see this in a lot of people that are very successful, like a lot of actors that ended up committing suicide could be a good example of not necessarily applies to them, but could be a good example of that. And then obviously when you do that, it leads you into a disconnect in your core values. You know, you're, you know, deep down inside that there's something that's not congruent with your spiritual nature. And there's this gap, this story gap. And the wider the story gap is, the more maladaptive behavior you have to form because your only other option is committing suicide then, which most people won't do. So they, they go the other route of maladaptive behavior, abusing food, abusing alcohol, abusing medical drugs, uh, which leads to poor lifestyle and nutritional choices, which leads to more drugs, more abuse, whatever. And you have what we have today, you know, nine to 10 Americans metabolically sick. And um, 
one of the administrative people that Biden ended up hiring, health administrators, now claiming that obesity is all genetics. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, dude, like what kind of circus has, has this cesspool of our society? Man. Because I mean, how can yeah, people not see that this is totally retarded and totally pathological, dude? Yeah, it's dude. I agree. I forgot about that lady saying that, and the, that that was kind of recent. Yeah, it's like I said, man. It's I think the best thing you can do, you know, as an individual, is just continue spreading that message, you know, and help trying to help people and just kind of pointing out, you know, all of this nonsense. And I feel like if you want to like do it, just do try to try to reach and help as many people as you can and tell them to use common sense and just try to put out the truth, you know, not, not all this lies and propaganda, you know, that the media and the government spreads like that. That's like, I feel like in my opinion, the best way to combat that. I, I mean, again, I could be wrong, but that that's the approach I'm taking. It's like, dude, <laughs> I don't know. Again, I, I, I just go, always go back to it. Take control of your life, decide what you want, you know, and, and that, that'll help you a lot. So Again, that's my opinion yeah hopefully hopefully in the next like 10 years we don't get banned from social media for spreading misinformation by telling dude, people to eat real seriously. food drink water and just use movement yeah. as medicine and be yeah, who, happy in life you know who the, who the hell knows man I, I really like that's one great thing about america is you have freedom of speech but man it's, i don't really know you know i, don't, I really don't know again yeah. I, I think i think anyone that really consumes my content or other other health, health people's content like if they can see see it for what it is they actually know that i i have very positive intentions and i, I do i, I want to help people so fuck man who knows well uh tanner are there any other topics in the top of your mind that you would like to cover that's been pressing you know i'm trying to think here man Honestly, Eugene, we, we do. We have, we have, we've had an amazing conversation. I feel like I've, you've kind of touched on really everything that I would want to tell people about, you know, like I don't want to dive into the weeds and I don't want to tell people about all these fancy new exercises or which diets best, you know, I, I've, and I've already, you know, again, I don't want to beat a, beat a dead horse. It's like, I've said everything I've, I've wanted to say, like, dude, just decide what you want, take responsibility for your life and use common sense. And, and focus on what matters and keep it basic. That's really like my core belief system and values. And that's what I want other people to start, you know, understanding and adopt. Yeah. And for the listeners, I mean, understand that um, a lot of you probably health and fitness isn't going to be a passion for you, at least not to the degree it is for Tanner and I, but just know this, even if you're trying to be like a computer programmer or president of a company, whatever you're trying to do, you're not going to be able to do that if you're like, if you have my, major depression, yeah. if you have other health issues, that's going to act as a bottleneck to everything you're going to try to achieve. Absolutely. And um, so it doesn't matter. Like you still have a biological human body that you need to learn how to operate correctly. And it's Dude, ever, evolved ever, many years to be that way. If you're, if you're healthier, you're going to be happier. Like that's, that's, it's that simple, you know, yeah. no matter what you do in your life, if you have your health, you're you're going to have a much, much greater likelihood to be happy. Yeah. Well, That's Tanner, I would simplify it, man. Well, Tanner, thank you for, I know it's getting late in your, in your side of the world. It's probably eight or nine already over there. Uh, 15. All good, man. All good. Well, um, I appreciate you doing this call. I appreciate that we got to connect and everything. It was great chatting with you. Maybe in a few months, we'll do another one or so. One new stuff sure, there, man. but um yeah in the meantime wishing you wishing you the best in dubai i think it's like really Thank cool you, that you decided to you know step out of your upbringing and try something yeah new. how many people would do that but as you guys can see um tanner is a perfect example if you continue to live in an environment that led to specific issues the chances of you getting better are are it's going to be tough. I'm not saying it's impossible. Sure. Some people can do it, but yeah, I'll say 99% of people won't be able to do it, you know, right. because yeah. those constant reinforcers of what led to yeah. that are still there, you know? I and, tend to agree. Yeah. If more people just, I would, another message I tell people, your listeners is like, take the time to like step outside of your life, I guess, and kind of try to look at it objectively from the outside 
and like ask yourself, all right, where am I going to be in 10 years if I stay here doing what I'm doing? Or where am I going to be in 10 years if I actually make the change that I truly know I need to make? You know, uh -huh. Where could I be in 10 years? You yeah. Know? And again, the, the, the easier way to say that is like, take 100% responsibility for your life and then decide what you want. Yeah, that's that's really the best advice I could give to anyone, in my opinion. It doesn't it's not even health advice; it's like just like life advice. So that's what I would tell people. Yeah, and like, what's the worst that can happen? You know, you already know the path you're on now yeah, isn't dude, working you're, for you. You know, you're, you're, yeah, your job and your hometown that those places aren't going anywhere, man. Like you can always go back back to those things and keep living the same life you're living. Yeah. But if if you don't, if dude, if, if nothing changes, nothing changes. Yeah, exactly. And most people need massive change, not little tinkering here and there. I mean, like yeah. night and day, yeah. night like and day, polar opposite change. Fun, fundamental change. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I agree. So I agree, man. Uh, well, hey, I really enjoyed coming okay. on the podcast. Eugene, I appreciate you, man. It was, a, right. it was a very fascinating conversation. I'm glad you and I are of the same mindset for sure. So I appreciate you, man. It's a dying breed, man, but I'm happy to run into you. And yeah, oh, dude, keep, keep it alive, man. Keep, keep putting the message out there. Yeah. And for the listeners, uh, thank you for jumping in as well. And just remember, the second you put your mental and physical health second, misery always follows close behind. OK, so it's a general like rule, always applies. And thank you for everyone for jumping in. And Tanner, great to have you as a guest. You're welcome on yeah, it's an honor. again as much as as much as you like. It's always great to to chat with people that are once again bringing freaking common sense back to the health industry. And yeah, we need to kind of get man. a lot of these goofballs that are that are deviating far away from common sense out of the industry and stop confusing people and getting back to the to the basics of how to be happy healthy and and good looking again for anyone that cares about the aesthetics part as well so sure it's truth okay it's i appreciate truth, you tanner thank you hey of course man enjoy the rest of your day Jane. thanks for tuning into the podcast if you've ever had trouble losing weight or you've lost weight but still didn't have the ideal body or health you're aiming for please feel free to reach out anytime and book an assessment. Eugene will work with you to cover your goals in detail, see what's holding you back, and go from there. In the meantime, feel free to check out the countless testimonials on Eugene's website in the link below. In the testimonial section you'll notice everyone has various backgrounds, are of all different ages, and all have had different challenges in their life, but they all have one thing in common, they were all able to find their health and achieve their ideal body. You're also welcome to add yourself to the Facebook group in the link below. There you'll have access to the live videos that Eugene does weekly on Sundays and other helpful content. Thank you again for tuning in.